Welcome to Terry Lawson Photography Conversations. It's November 28th, 2013, and on this beautiful winter's day, surrounded by deep white snow, we are in the studio of professional photographer Peter Carroll. Prior to picking up a camera, it's been an interesting journey for Peter, including a stint in the Canadian Armed Forces as a helicopter pilot where he flew with the 408th Squadron and served on the Canadian mission to Haiti in 1996. Today, as a professional photographer, he strives to show his perspective of the world through his stock, travel, landscape, and portrait work. He is represented by many stock photo agencies, which market and sell his work internationally. Recently, he worked on a project with Through Each Other's Eyes, an organization in Phoenix, Arizona, which through photography helps people understand cultures around the world that are different from their own. He has also published two ebooks, Photographing Edmonton and Arizona People and Places. So join me now as we talk with professional photographer Peter Carroll. Welcome to Conversations, Peter. Thanks. Thanks very much for having me. So to begin with, I'd I'd really like to get a an understanding of you as a photographer. So I'd like to ask you what drives you to pick up that camera of yours and take a picture? I'd say quite honestly uh, the simplest way to say it is that photography helps me appreciate life. No pun intended but it honestly puts a focus on things for me. Whether it's you know sunrise in a grand landscape or doing somebody's portrait you have to connect with your subject, you have to learn about it, um, immerse yourself uh, in the subject and you know that's uh, going to give you a better appreciation of life. You're going to learn about things in the process. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a wonderful journey for helping me learn. Yeah. So let's, let's say you're uh, uh, deciding on going to do a shoot somewhere. Do you just go drive to where you want to take your picture and take some shots or is there a lot of work that you do prior to, to heading down the road and uh, taking those pictures? It's kind of evolved over the years, quite honestly. Uh, there's always an element of research. Um, I studied engineering, as you know, um, in university. So there's a big part of my personality that is, as you say, uh, left-brained, um, kind of logic, analytical. Um, so research is important to to learn about the subject, but as I continue into photography, I, I appreciate more and more spontaneous creativity. Kind of put yourself in positions and things will happen for you. There's a wonderful uh, project uh, Andrew Zuckerman put together called The Wisdom Project, and he interviewed a whole bunch of different people, and uh, one of them was Chuck Close, the painter, and he had something that totally connected with me. He said he thought that uh, inspiration was for amateurs, the rest of us just get to work. <laughs> so I really enjoy that, that yes, you must research things and stuff, but just get to work. Something will occur to you, then something else will occur to you. And that's part of the creative process. Mm -hmm. Now I have to ask you, uh, because I get asked this question too, from a photographic perspective, why do you live in Edmonton? I mean, there's all these beautiful places in the world, right, right. that you could be uh, uh, living and, and taking photographs. But both of us are here in Edmonton. In Edmonton. Sure. You know, so what's that all about? Well, it, it's a fairly simple answer. Um, how I got to Edmonton was a military posting. Um, before becoming a photographer, I was a stay-at-home dad. And before that, I was in the military. I was a helicopter pilot. So um, out of Portage, La Prairie, where I um, got my wings on the, uh, the helos, the postings came up, got thrown on the wall, and the guy said, choose, and I chose Edmonton, and I was granted that, so here I am. The backstory is that my wife's family live here in Short Park, just east of Edmonton. So yeah, certainly a drawing card, too. Drawing card. But uh, the bonus is, I think Edmonton is... Alberta in general, but Edmonton's where I live, is a fantastic place for photography. I've said to many people, the fact that we have four distinct seasons totally drives me. It, it's, it reinforces change, newness, there's always different opportunities every couple of months for something new. Um, I think that's fantastic. 
Edmonton, we might get to it later, but uh, I think it's a great place to uh, photograph, and I even made an e-book about it. So. What I love about it is, in four hours, you can be in any topographical zone that you want to be. Totally. I mean, you've got the prairies, you've got the mountains, you've got the boreal forest, you've got the lakes. Uh, you know, there's, there's so many beautiful places to yeah. go that are, as you say, exaggerated by the seasons. I mean, the range of landscapes, when you think about it, the majestic Rocky Mountains, obviously, wow factor there, right? Mm -hmm. But you go you know, an hour and a half, two hours, the other direction, flat prairies, <laughs> absolute flatness. Yeah. So that is so exciting for a photographer to have that range. You yeah. know, I'm not living in the mountains where every day it's that majestic stuff. I have something that challenges me wherever I drive. Yeah. So this is, I love it here. Well, it's like... If you lived in the Rocky Mountains, you wouldn't even see them after a while. It's true. You know, yes. It's, it's, you, you have to be able to go someplace to appreciate it, right? Yeah. Like I've, I've really discovered the prairies, southern Alberta, southeastern Alberta. Yeah. Uh, you just recently took a number of photographs down there, and it's, it's such an amazingly beautiful place. Gorgeous. Of tranquility, you know, like there's nobody there. <laughs> the, the, the grasslands are incredible. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've been there, but the, the great sand hills of Saskatchewan. Yeah. I mean, when people see those images, they think you're in Saudi Arabia, and you're telling them it's Saskatchewan, and they, poop, their minds explode. I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing this area yeah. of the world. So. Yeah. So yeah, we are fortunate, I guess. Yeah. Uh, to to be here. You go out and you take your photographs. And you bring them back into your nice little studio here. Do you spend a lot of time post-processing your images? That's actually a hard one to answer because I don't spend time with other photographers who post-process. So I'm not exactly sure. What's the baseline? I, what's the baseline <laughs> is, the, is the problem, yeah. <laughs> I'd be guessing no. Um, I don't sit down with each image for hours. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not... I appreciate the technicals, they have to be right, especially considering I was in stock and you know, obviously clients have certain thresholds they want, but I'm not a pixel peeper. I will not sit down with an image for you know three, four hours like I know lots of guys do. That doesn't make it wrong, it's just not my style. So yes, I mean stuff goes through post-processing. Um, I'm still a graduated uh, neutral density filter guy as opposed to doing it on the computer. If I can minimize my computer work, I will always try and do that. Yeah. Um, certain things can be done on the computer nowadays that just um, are specific to that. I appreciate that too. So, mm -hmm. uh, whatever it takes, but I'm not going to sit down for hours if I can afford it. Yeah. Of, yeah. One other thing that I always uh, find interesting too is, particularly where we are today with all the amazing digital cameras that are out there right now. Right. Anybody can basically go out and take some pretty amazing images mm -hmm. on these cameras. So what uh, what do you think separates those right. people from a photographer that creates amazing images? What's um, the separation? Yeah, that's that's a great question because getting into the philosophy of photography. Um, I said it to workshop um, students before that when you first get your camera nowadays especially they come with a giant manual and you look at that thing and go how will I ever <laughs> understand this thing and it's got so many buttons and menus and stuff truth be told I compare that to getting to base camp of Everest when you understand the technicals you have to understand those I mean mm -hmm. it's so important you cannot it's part of your craft so it's the step one but the true climb of Everest in the photography world is deeper than technicals. It's about what I call getting to the essence of the subject. Now, it's a funny kind of word because its definition is different to each person. But to me, essence is the very core of what the subject is for you. That's going to be different for each person. That's the beauty of art. It's subjective. Mm -hmm. But... Um, that's part of a great photograph as, a part, as opposed to a pretty photograph is there's nothing unnecessary in the frame. It's all there for a reason. The equipment that was chosen was chosen for a reason. The light is uh, telling the best story that you want to tell. 
deliberate choices is what separates a photographer from just a snap shooter, I would say. Um, you're I there, like that. You're there deliberate not to, choice. You're, yeah. not, you're trying not to record. You're not a journalist or kind of approach to it. You're trying to create um, a story with the camera as the medium. Mm -hmm. So it's the best answer I got so far. <laughs> so, <laughs> I saw a, a fantastic interview uh, recently with um, Johnny Ive, the Apple designer, and mm -hmm. Mark um, Newsom. Um, they teamed up to put together uh, designs uh, that were for sale at Sotheby's um, for the Red campaign. And uh, the interviewer asked Johnny Ive about design, and he talked about the essence, but he said something that just amused me. He said that things that are part of design that aren't necessary just annoy him. <laughs> <laughs> things have to have a reason. Yeah. And I feel the same way in photography. Yeah. If it's there, the photographer meant it to be there. And if right. they didn't, then they're not doing their job properly. Right. So whether I agree or not is all part of the beauty of subjective art. But... Deliberate choices is part of what a photographer does. Well, and uh, we are all, as photographers, giving our impression of how we see the world, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So uh, when you set up to take a photograph and I set up in the same place to take a photograph, those two photographs are going to be completely different. I totally yeah. love that. I like. I, I, some people don't like shooting with people. I get such a kick out of shooting with people because of that exact thing you mentioned. Yeah. When I see what they create at the end... It's like, oh, crap, I didn't see that. I never saw that. <laughs> and that, that's the beauty of it, is that they see the world differently than you, and I'm constantly telling young photographers, go with that, stay with that. There's way too much copying of people these days exactly. because of the social media, uh, everybody sharing things, which is good. It's good to share. That's part of the process of art. But it's not good to copy. There's a natural tendency at the beginning when you're learning to emulate people because of course. You, know, you, you have to learn the craft. But then you get to a stage where you drop all that aside and you start telling your own stories. And that's where it's lots of fun. Well, I've, I've uh, even noticed in some of the photographs that I'm taking right now, as I, as I look at them in, in a, as a group, I say, isn't that interesting? There's a definite style that's starting to show up totally in my photographs, yes. and that made me really feel good because yeah. they're they're my images in the way that I want them to be presented. Right? Yep. Uh, they're 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 not like anybody else's. That's and right. I thought that was a, it made me feel good that that was that was happening in my process. Totally. Uh, that, as you know, just keeps going and going and going. Yeah, it never ends. That's the yeah. beauty of it. That, yeah. I mean. Maybe that's the best gift of photography is that the learning never ends yeah. because you're constantly finding out about yourself, about yeah. the world around you, yeah. and you're telling stories with the camera yeah. as you go along. I mean, yeah, um, yeah that's, that's uh, fantastic. Yeah. Now you've got all this pictures uh, all processed and developed, and you want to share them and promote your work. Right. Do you do a lot of promotion uh, as far as your... Photography um, is concerned? The promotion has evolved, I guess, um, as I've been in photography. Uh, I started in stock, so the promotion was handled for me by the agencies that represented the work. Uh, I just submitted, and they took on, for their middleman fee, all the promotion. Then, as uh, Microstock kind of hit the world, uh, stock started to dwindle as far as uh, the money that came back from it. And as a good photographer friend of mine says, uh, many streams make a river. So uh, you kind of have to evolve and find other avenues to, mm -hmm. to bring in money, if that's important to you. It's not the be-all and end-all. But for me, it was just fun to, to make a business out of it as well. Uh, so I appreciated quite quickly that personal contact in business is extremely important. Yeah. So yes, I do social media promotion, I get the you know, examples of what I've been doing out there to the world. Um, but the best promotion is always word of mouth, one person to the next. Doing a good job for a client, that client will talk about it at their dinner table when they have friends mm -hmm. over, or it'll be yeah. up on the wall, and yeah. I'm doing more and more portrait work now. People will see things up on the wall and go, wow, great shot, hopefully. <laughs> and who, <laughs> who took that? And then the stories yeah. will continue. So yeah. 
that honestly is the best promotion um, for me. It means the people who come to you, you know, use my skills like the work already. Right. Um, I noticed uh, some things that are interesting that are happening on your web page. Uh, one of those things is uh, you're starting to do some ebooks. Right. Yeah. Which is very interesting. And uh, I'd like to sort of uh, understand why you've gone that way and uh, maybe talk about the process that is involved in, in putting something like that together. Okay, so Not that you have to tell any secrets. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, people that know me, there are very few secrets I keep in photography. That's I, I'm very open about this stuff. Uh, the ebook was just a, a, a personal goal, a project that I've always wanted to do. It developed because of a uh, another project we may get into that uh, brought me to Arizona. Uh, teamed up on an exchange. Um, from that exchange, um, myself and fellow Alberta photographer Royce Howland put together an ebook about that project. That experience led me to thinking, hey, I should write my own. Mm -hmm. What's the subject I'm gonna make an ebook about? People always say write about what you know. Same thing applies in photography. Your best work may be right outside your door, mm -hmm. the area that you know the best. So uh, quickly came to the conclusion that writing an ebook about Edmonton, uh, a guide on what places might be interesting to shoot and how to shoot them um, would be something I'd know. So I think it would be of value to local photographers. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, that's that's number uh, one for me, and hopefully it'll continue from there. Learning about how to do it was, uh, as always, uh, fascinating. Um, never used InDesign in my life. <laughs> um, quickly went from the trial to now purchasing it uh, in the cloud so that I can continue to do it you know, in the future in 2014. Yeah. So. I, I quite enjoyed putting it together, and hopefully the people that have bought it are going to get some uh, some great use out of it. It must have been uh, an incredible uh, time of focus to put it together. It was actually. A, it, it, I'll smile as you mentioned it because the um, Arizona ebook and the Edmonton ebook were done within the trial period, so thirty days. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so jam That's packed, perfect. focus, concentration. <laughs> Um, Get everything all ready to go because we got 30 days. That's right. <laughs> That's, right. <laughs> That's perfect. I love it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think uh, one of the other things I've seen on your page is, uh, I think, uh, an incredible project that you were involved in, and that's with uh, Through Each Other's Eyes, the people right. out yeah. of Phoenix, Arizona. I'd really like you to talk about that project because I think it's uh, okay. very valuable. Uh, for people to understand what it's all about. Yeah, sure. Um, th that project is huge in my journey in photography. Um, as I look back, there's mile markers, I call them. You know, um, That's a big one to me. So what is it? Uh, friends of mine, great photographers, Darwin Wiggett and um, Samantha Christenthal, were offered the project from the Phoenix group. Their schedules didn't match uh, the opportunity and they were asked to suggest somebody. Mm -hmm. So they put my name forward. So out of the blue, I got an email that offered me the gig, and uh, I'm appreciating more and more, always say yes. Mm -hmm. Never say no, <laughs> because you don't know where it's going to lead. Yeah. It matched what I love to do, travel and photography. I didn't know if it was going to match my schedule, but I said yes and said, I'm just going to make this happen. This is too good an opportunity to say no. So uh, to sum it up, the group down in Phoenix is called Through Each Other's Eyes. There were um, a group of photographers that got together with the mission to, uh, how should I describe it, to um, educate people about different cultures around the world through the medium of photography. Mm -hmm. Storytelling is a big part of their goal with uh, the work that they create. So uh, myself and um, another Alberta photographer, Royce Howland, uh, we're the uh, guys who teamed up and traveled down to Phoenix. We did uh, two weeks of shooting down there with two members of TEOE. Uh, we did a one-week break, and then those two members came up here. Mm. Uh, the logistics, how it works, is um, we get ourselves to the location, and after that, we are hosted 100%. So it, we're billeted with them, or hotels are all paid for, all meals are paid for, so it's just a wonderful experience. Wow. Uh, we traveled 
honestly almost the entire state of Arizona in two weeks. <laughs> um, it was a fascinating experience. Uh, I appreciate, uh, how should I put it? I, I appreciate um, that getting to many places gives you a lot of options in the work you can create. But there's something also to be said about staying in one location and getting deep into an area. So we got a bit of both from the two people down there. They exposed us to both sides of that uh, kind of experience that you can mm -hmm. have. The results of the exchange are always shared in the two cities. So there was a, an exhibit down in Phoenix. Uh, so there's four photographers. We do 20 prints each, so an exhibit of 80 prints. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> we traveled down there again to be part of that exhibit. Um, and up here, it was actually Calgary, because Royce is in Calgary. Uh, we did uh, exhibits with uh, Calgary Public Library and um, St. Mary's University College in Calgary as part of Exposure uh, 2013, um, the month-long Calgary uh, Photo Festival. We did presentations with the library. We've continued on the legacy of the project, sharing it with the community. We've had such a great experience from the project that we decided to start our own organization up here in Alberta. So we are called IRIS. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that too. Yeah. yeah, so the IRIS Photographic Society of Alberta is an official non-profit organization with the government and the name uh, is inspired by inspiring respect through images and stories. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're about and uh, we hope in the future, we're now in the fundraising phase, we've done some workshops um, trying to get some uh, money in the bank so we can continue and do another exchange um, next year is, mm -hmm. is, is the goal. The Phoenix crowd are tied in with many groups around the world from their exchanges of 25 plus years, uh, Japan wow. and Ireland and Italy and there's, you know, Mexico, there's a whole bunch of places that we could tap, tap into as well. No kidding. So it's a fascinating organization. We've had a unbelievable experience from the project. It transformed my photography, quite honestly. So, yeah, it'll always have a special place in my heart for the journey that I'm on in photography, that, that exchange. Yeah. Well, I think it uh, sounds to me like it's done a few things for you. First of all, we talked about previously in the interview uh, the fact that when you go with people to another area, you're exposed to different scenes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you you are seeing something fresh and new for the first time. Right. And it, it uh, promotes that aspect. And also the, the storytelling aspect of a different culture. Yeah. I mean, uh, Arizona is a very foreign place to the Great White North. Right. And uh, to have that, that uh, intense time of two weeks to as you say, travel all over the, the state, yeah. taking photographs must have been uh, mind-blowing. It, it was. <laughs> it, it, it really, really was. And um, one of the goals of the organization down there is, through the exhibits, maybe locals see their own home in a different way. Exactly. Right? exactly. So each exhibit would have 40 images from each location. Yeah. And I had many um, Arizona folks come up to me at the exhibit down there and say, where is that? And, and I would tell them. And it honestly could have been about... It's 10 miles down the road. 10 miles down the road. No kidding. There was one shot uh, that had um, outside of a shopping center. And when I told people, they couldn't believe it. They had shopped there their entire lives. And they said, where is that? So, I don't know. I just looked up and I saw it. I thought it was interesting. So, yeah. you know, that's the beauty of the project is that you yeah. get to see your own home in a different way through the eyes of a visitor. Yeah. And then, you know, it's, it's, as the Calgary people saw Arizona, maybe there's an interest in going there or meeting these people or yeah. experiencing, you know, Arizona through 40 images is a start. Yeah. And hopefully people take it from there. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the simple thing of even just being here in Edmonton. Uh, we talk about how beautiful a place it is to take photographs. And once again, when people see the photographs that, that we take of Edmonton, they say, Wow, you know what? Maybe it is a beautiful place. You yeah. Know? Well, and I, 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 you start looking more. <laughs> you know, you start looking more at at what's around you. Right? I've had that comment about the ebook. Uh, locals and people that used to live here have mentioned, "Gosh, you made Edmonton look good." <laughs> and my reaction is always, well, it's, "Edmonton is it's good. good. You just yeah. had to see it." Yeah. 
and yeah. and the beauty is that some other photographer will see it in a different way than I did. Yeah. Um, I honestly believe there are pictures to be taken everywhere. There's no magic city. There's no magic location. No. Um, outside your front door is as interesting as Paris or the Rockies yeah. or somewhere. You know? And it's and it's fun to try and present it that way too, right? It's a philosophy, and once you wrap your head around it, your work gets better. Quite yeah. honestly, yeah. is because you're you drop the trophy hunting. Yeah. You don't feel you have to get somewhere in order to get a good picture. A good picture is there, whether you can see it or not, is the question. <laughs> How creative are you that day? Yeah. Freeman Patterson, the fantastic oh Canadian photographer, just, I love his philosophy. His books yeah. are amazing. They were yeah. some of the first books I read in, in photography. Me too. Yeah, The <laughs> Art of in Seeing. My studio. <laughs> yeah, all those great books. And he had that old um, famous workshop a trick where you throw the hula hoop out <laughs> and people would have to in the film days take you know a roll of film from within the hula hoop and then you know what could yeah. they create <laughs> his idea was it's there are yeah. you going to see it yeah um, uh, uh, the other one I like is uh, lock yourself in your bathroom and take 150 different pictures there you go <laughs> yeah <laughs> these are great exercises yeah, um, yeah. yeah. so you yeah. know it's wonderful to go to famous cities or to the Rockies or to, you know, um, iconic locations. We all enjoy that. But appreciate that there's stuff right outside your front door. Yeah. Peter, I've really enjoyed talking to you today. and uh, It's been a lot of fun. I'm, uh, I'm inspired by your work, and I hope others will be. And uh, we'll make sure that uh, uh, when we post up this interview that all of these uh, wonderful places they can go and look at your work. People will have the opportunity to do that. And uh, just keep up the good work. You're Thanks. doing a great job. Thanks. And, and to anybody out there listening, just you know, get on email or call me up. I love connecting with people out there. And uh, that's another great gift of photography is meeting people. Yeah. We, we met through that process. So exactly. It uh, continues. So. Thanks, Pete. All right. Take care. You have been listening to Terry Lawson Photography Conversations. Interviews with local photographers and those involved in the art scene. I hope you can join me for my next interview.